17 professional bouts. He has 17 knockouts. He is ranked number six in the world by the WBA, number four by the IBC and the WBC. He is ranked number three by the prestigious Boxing Illustrated from Pensacola, Florida, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. Ten rounds, world ranked middleweights. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. From the 1988 Olympic team, only Michael Carbajal, a world champion, Roy Jones, ready to step up and move into that picture. He knows Riddick Bowe is also on the threshold. He has knocked out his last two opponents in the first round. Former welterweight champ Jorge Vaco is moving up, and also Art Serrano. It is a small ring, 17 feet. You have two fighters who have combined for 88 wins, 68 by knockout. Neither fighter has ever been down. So we could be seeing early 4th of July fireworks in this one. Normally Roy Jones is a fast starter and Castro is a slow starter. But here in this opening round, Castro is putting the pressure going right after Roy Jones. Now Castro came into this ring bone dry. No sweat on him at all. Could get caught. Jones, 23 years old, has had 17 fights. As a pro, he's fought 56 rounds. Castro, a year older, has had 76 pro fights and has fought 432 rounds as a professional. That's what he brings into the ring. And he says he will take Jones out by the third round. And his biggest problem is going to be that speed of Roy Jones, though. Jones is very quick with his punches. He hits hard, but it's mostly from the snap. He knows Castro will come right at him. Castro only his second fight in the United States. Fought most of his fights in his uh, home country, Argentina. He is the Argentinian and South American champion. His fight in the U.S. three years ago when he stopped uh, the veteran Jake Torrance in New York. Castro went 12 rounds last December against Terry Norris at 154 pounds. Losing the WBC title affair. Roy Jones coming in here looking to make an impression. You talked about the Terry Norris fight. Jorge Castro said that the Terry Norris fight said that he was just a superior boxer and tonight he's in the ring with a super boxer in Roy Jones. It is very rare these days to see two fighters in the top ten facing one another, kind of a Russian roulette. They go head to head. Winner likely in line for world title fight. The loser regroups, but Jones says he has to make an impression. He wants to present to a Terry Norris or James Tony or Julian Jackson an attractive money package uh, for a possible encounter for the title. And also, if there's any criticism leveled at Roy Jones uh, right now is that he hasn't faced anybody in his 17 uh, fights. And now he could say he's faced uh, a guy who is uh, right up there. Closing seconds of the first. River Run, Shimmering Bay, Crystal Lake, Aqua Sea, Kawasaki, it's where. Following the Seoul Olympics in 1988, there are many who thought that Roy Jones going into the pros had the most talent of all the fighters coming out. Carbajal, Bo, Mercer, Maynard, Hembrick, McKinney, Foster. But in four years, he has had only 17 pro fights. In five years, Castro has had 76. He's kind of gone to the other extreme. But Roy Jones and his father, Roy Jones Sr., 
have taken a different road, a road that you and your father took. A similar road, except he's not been as busy as I was early in my career. I was fighting every couple of weeks in my career. Yeah, but they want to do it themselves. They don't want to lose control to some other promoters, and they are finding it very difficult to get some of the fights that they would like for Roy Jones at this point. Sure, most of the big fighters are signed up by these major companies, these big-time promoters, and to get a match with these big, big fights, these big-name fighters, you have to sign a contract with these big powerful promoters and who tie up for several fights exactly they want options take percent of these four options they want a percentage of your purse they want a percentage of the money coming in now between rounds Roy, Roy Jones senior telling his son play his game a bit Jones staying out a little bit too far for Jones senior These are uh, two self-assured fighters, confident to the point of uh, being kind of cocky as they enter the ring. Both of them bring a lot of confidence in this. This is the same way that Castro fought Terry Norris. He didn't want to chase Norris around. It's a dangerous thing to do with a fighter like Roy Jones. You know, you see the upper body strength of Castro here early. He's pushing home Jones around, maneuvering him with his upper body, now trying to lure him in. Jones uh, may have broken the nose of Castro. Castro has been thrown off the course. He's feeling his nose now. He's bothered. He has his left low. And Jones is bringing it to Castro, and this is warming Castro up. The blood now coming from the nose of Castro. And they are talking and talking one another. Jones showing his speed. Fifteen seconds in the second. The crowd here has been whipped into a frenzy. Blood all over the face of Castro. And I think uh, there's a good chance that uh, his nose has been broken by Roy Jones in the second round. Well, Sean, one who's had the experience of taking some shots in the nose. What is this man going through right now? His nose is broken, and it hurts to get your nose broken like that. You can see the blood streaming down. And here is, here's a look at the punch that did it. Watch for the overhand right. No, it was the left hook. Bing. Big he, left hook. Castro was watching for the overhand right. And, and when, whenever that happens, it hurts your nose. And every time you get hit in it from that point on, every time, even if you get hit in the hand, it still hurts your nose. There Castro is backing up. To break your nose, though, is different than like breaking your hand or breaking a bone. There's no bone in your nose. It's gristle. And it's blood just comes streaming down. It takes forever to heal. Now, between rounds, they apply medicine up the nose, a coagulant to try to stop the bleeding. Well, hey, Castro. He's known as Locomotora, Locomotive, always going forward. And I think he feels a sense of urgency now as we head into the third round. Here's a guy turned pro in 1987 at 19 years old. In five years, he's averaged 15 fights a year. And his high was in 1988 when he fought 19 times in 12 months. He's slowing down though, Sean. He only had three fights in 1992. Although you got to consider he did not fight January, February, or March. He was a little back on track. He's fought once in April, once in May, once in June, and this time in July. The and age must be getting to him. <laughs> 24 years old. You know, now that changes the context of the fight. Now suddenly, Castro has to fight out of desperation, and that could well play right into the hands of Roy Jones. What Jones wants Castro to do is just walk right in and try to slug with him. Start throwing those wild, slow, thudding punches. That's when Roy Jones can shine. All Roy has to do is reset and speed his punches up. 
Oh, Castro is very strong up on top. His shoulders, his arms are very heavy. That's where his power comes from. Roy Jones takes solace in the story of Evandy Holyfield, another one of the Olympians who lost in controversy and then came back and made his mark, his gold, as a pro. And that's uh, what uh, Roy Jones wants to duplicate. Jones fighting as, as a middleweight. He's at 159 for this fight. They say he very easily could extend to the 168 super middleweight limit. It looks like Roy Jones going through a little of uh, what Darren Van Horn is. He's just going to get bigger. Leading what up to this, this fight, he did say, oh, Al, that he was having a weight problem, yeah. just waiting for the match to come right. around. <laughs> Not well, from his weight, though. I think he wants to get uh, wants to get Norris, Jackson, or Tony while he still is a middleweight. Inside 20 seconds in the third, but he wants to uh, not only win this fight, look impressive, he wants to be the colorful man on the scene that a champion has to step in the ring with to make the big money at this weight. I'm here in this auto. Pensacola Civic Center, and they are watching their own Roy Jones Jr. in the silver trunks against Jorge Castro. Trunks were white to start the evening, now white and red. Blood coming from the nose of Castro, he had his nose broken in the second round. And now it's Castro crowding with Jones, he has him in the corner, that's where he wants him. Jones making no effort to get out, he wants to slug it out. Jones at 6 feet, 159. Castro at five foot nine, 156 and a half, and Jones is a four inch reach advantage. Castro has won 21 of his last 22 fights. The only defeat, a 12 round decision loss for the WBC super welterweight title, the hands of Terry Norris. That's a man that Roy Jones now wants to fight as a middleweight. Big left hook from Castro, and he senses that Roy Jones is hurt. Between rounds, Roy Jones Sr. telling his son, Stick and move. He said, I'll let you play one more round, Roy. So get out there and play. Stick and move. Maneuver around your opponent. But the danger in doing that is you can't leave your hands down. Castro found that right hand low. And the left hook over the top. The guard comes down for Castro. Well, Castro's got to be thinking to himself, my gosh, everything I do, I get hit. Every time I try to throw a punch, I get nailed. Crowd does not appreciate Castro playing around. It's all right for Jones, <laughs> but not for Castro, who comes into the backyard of Roy Jones. Oh, that crowd is so helpful. You hear the crowd out there, you try to work for the crowd, sometimes they can pump you up and fire you up to go out there and do a better job. We notice a scar on the right shoulder of uh, Castro. He's not called Locomotora for nothing. Uh, you know, a locomotion, he loves to race cars and about seven years ago got into an accident. Hurt his shoulder, had some surgery, but he said it hasn't affected him in the ring. And there he is trying out that big right. But see him back up and let Roy Jones out of the corner. Where he wants to do, where he wants to do his damage is while, while Roy's in the corner, leaning up against the ropes. Jones playing upstairs with Castro. The closing seconds of the fourth. Jack Deeps thought he created a perfect woman. Come to me. The perfect world. Hey, Jack. Noids do not have sex with doodles. It's the oldest law in cool world. You're not in Kansas anymore. I told your fantasies. This place should be erased. Hey, it's a living. I just want to be real. Cool world. Glad you dropped it. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, July 10th at theaters everywhere. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. 
It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Working up a sweat. He has four rounds in against Jorge Castro. Nice workout for Jones. Since last August, he has fought just two rounds. He knocked out Jorge Vaca in one back in January, and he knocked out Art Sawano in one round, stopped him in April. But with a lot of amateur experience, people want to know what happens to Jones after three rounds. I think we can tell here this is the fifth, still strong. Still moving well, still throwing good punches. I think we can tell that he's in good shape. Between rounds, Roy Sr., as you see him look on, told his son, just keep playing a little bit more. Roy Jr. said he's trying to lure me in, saying Casper wants me to come inside, but I'm not going to do it. See him shaking his head, no? Then I'm going to pick him apart from the outside, saying, no, 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 you're not going to get me to come in and play your game. That's how you rely on your corner to tell you how to win fights. Your corner can see your mistakes that you cannot see. Also on your opponent, your corner can see the mistakes. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Roy Jones Sr. has been in boxing for quite a number of years. He's had fighters in the past. Now he has six fighters of his own along with his son. In and out goes Roy Jones picking Castro apart. He knows Castro has punching power, and he also uh, said before the fight, a guy like Castro can lull you to sleep, so he has to stay active. Doesn't want to go to sleep on Castro. You talked earlier about the confidence of these two middleweights. Jones said on Castro that he should have a lot of confidence. He's got four times as many fights as I do. Jones generally has ended them by now. 100% knockout ratio. 17 fights for Jones, 17 knockouts. 12 of those have ended in the first three rounds. Time remaining in the fifth. Al Albert along with the champ, Sean O'Grady in Pensacola, Florida. This is the main event. And in this town, the man in silver is the main eventer. Roy Jones, in and out. And uh, trying to dazzle Castro with some footwork. Jones is playing with Castro to this point. Ten seconds to go, and we will pause for a word from your local cable systems. If you have thinning hair, call Hair Club for Men for a free brochure and find out about Hair Club's non-surgical polyfuse method, which fuses carefully matched human hair to your own. It looks and feels natural. I wanted something that looked very natural and also looked very natural when I was skinned and when my hair was very wet. Your new hair can also renew confidence and self-esteem and help to bring out the best of who you are. Enjoy the worry-free active lifestyle you've always wanted. Even when you feel it, feel around the perimeter of your head. I mean, you really cannot feel anything in your hair. It really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion. No matter what the sport or activity, Hair Club for Men's non-surgical process will allow you to feel secure about your new hair. Call for our free brochure to see our various hairstyles and receive information about your hair loss alternatives. And by the way, I'm not only the Hair Club president, but I'm also a client. Into the center of the ring, Roy Jones in the silver, and in the white trunks is Jorge Castro. Castro has to pick up the pace, five rounds down and five to go. It has been all Roy Jones so far. Darren Van Horn pitched a shutout in, his, in the first fight against Nicky Walker, and uh, Sean, uh, you have Jones likewise in this one? It looks like so far he has pitched the shutout. 
You were talking. We were talking in the, in, the uh, in this corner segment about how important the corner is to steer a fighter through a match between rounds. Roy Jones Sr. told his son, he said, talking about Castro, he ain't done cooking yet. He ain't quite ready. So one other thing that a, that a corner man can see that a fighter cannot is when your opponent is ready to go, when he's ready to get out of there. And what tells you that? Well, you, what tells you that is the gleam in his eye or him looking away, his concentration not there, something, there's his knees wiggle a little bit, you hit him on the chin and he staggers. That's how that's how Cornerman knows it's time to end the show. One point of information that Castro knows very well, Roy Jones, who has scored knockouts in all 17 of his pro fights, has been past the fifth round on only four occasions. This is the fifth time. Jones has never been 10. Castro has been 10 on 21 occasions. So Castro uh, looking to uh, bring Jones into some uncharted territory. Well, Jones has gone nine rounds once before. So maybe, like a, maybe a waiting game for Castro, but at this point, he's got to understand to win this fight, he has to knock Jones out. He did want to take it to the later rounds, but he also said, I take the fight round by round, which some some fighters say that it's a good thing to do. I don't, I'm not a big believer in that because I think everything you can find out about your opponent, every way you can plan for him to beat that man is only going to be to your advantage. Some of the tape coming loose on the left glove of Roy Jones. Well, that glove's been busy. No wonder it's coming loose. He has been fast, and what a terrific left hook he has. Very quick, sharp, snapping left hook. Ooh. Get up with him. Castro just trying to hold on now. We were talking earlier about when you sent your opponent ready to go. Castro certainly playing up the villain role here in Pensacola. Well, did you think he was ready to go right there? Yes. He was ready to go. Was it the gleam in the eye? He wasn't brushing his teeth, but yes, I think he had the gleam in his eye. The eyes get glazed over. With a fighter like Castro, you cannot rush it. There was a good overhand right by Castro. You have to wait till he's ready. Another good overhand right by Castro. Measuring Jones in the corner, and that's where Jones will stay. Six rounds down. And we have this program note, Sean. I know you will be very interested in this because on Thursday night right here on USA, Gene Wilder, Marty Feldman, Peter Boyle, Terry Gar, Madeline Kahn, all star in the outrageous Mel Brooks comedy, Young Frankenstein. That's Thursday night at 9, 8 Central on USA. Were you in this also? I was not, but oh. I'll tell you, that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Young uh, Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. Some other stars <laughs> in the boxing world. WBC middleweight champion, Julian Jackson with Jones ranked number four, and Jorge Castro ranked at number six. Reggie Johnson, James Tony, the other middleweight champions. Terry Norris at the junior middleweight uh, level, although Jones wants to meet him as a middleweight. I don't think, I don't think Roy Jones could get down to junior middleweight at this point, 154. Well, he may be down there right now because he's worked up a sweat. So Castro showing uh, some signs at the end of that last round. But this is how you beat the hard, heavy punchers. Those fighters that are slow, deliberate. You beat them with speed. That's just what so far Roy Jones has done. But with that, you can never let down because they always have the power to end the fight. Hard hitter and a strong fighter is Castro. And what are some of the other middleweight champions looking at in Roy Jones now as they watch uh, this fight and think of Jones as a possible opponent? What are some of the things in the ring they're focusing on now? Some of the things they're, they're trying to look at, trying to scout Roy Jones, seeing that he's carrying his hands a little bit low, trying to see how they can deal with that speed, trying to figure out what kind of fight plan they have to go into if they get a match with Roy Jones. 
one thing that Castro had a big problem with in this match, he brought no fight plan to the, to the match because he, he'd never seen Roy Jones. In like fact, he didn't want to see Roy Jones. Well, maybe that's part of the strategy of Jones fighting only 17 times in four years. Well, that's a great thing about going to Argentina for your opponent, but <laughs> they more than likely have not seen him fight. Jones has Castro cornered. Castro not too concerned about that. Jones snapping him off, but coming up short. And Castro is right there for Jones. Jones is worried about Castro trying to lure him in. You know, he felt the strength of Castro a little bit at the last round, but earlier in this fight, in the third round, he felt the strength, the balance of Castro. And Castro once again flexing that right arm, so he's already broken his nose in the fight and apparently has some problems with the right. We've seen that earlier in the fight. Well, he got hit so hard in the nose that it busted his right arm. That's a hard punch. Good feints by Roy Jones. And Jones uh, showing great discipline. The, will not be lulled in by Castro. Although Castro certainly inviting. Standing in front, arms down. Now he makes his charge. Castro's ranked number six, as you just saw, by the WBC. He's also ranked uh, six by the ODA and seven by the IBF as a junior middleweight. Oh, and Castro is marbled. The end of the last round, Jorge Castro was walloped. Look at this big overhand right that Castro steps into. He was hurt. An earlier left hook also did tremendous damage. Castro feels now he really has to pick up the pace. And that's exactly what he's doing. Haymakers in the direction of Jones, which in the end could just get Castro in more trouble. And there's that left hook that I've talked about from Roy Jones. This is where Jones is at his best, when his opponents are moving in, moving forward. Where Jones has had trouble in this fight is Castro has not ran in like Jones wanted him to. And instead, Castro has invited Jones into his den. Remember, Castro has never been down 76 pro fights. But he almost went down in the last round. He wobbled. Now, what you do if your opponent won't come in on you, sometimes you have to go into his den, score a big flurry, and then back away from him, hoping that he follows you. Boxers fight in spurts. So when, when your opponent flurries on you, you have to get the play back. You have to flurry on them. So what Jones can do is flurry, take a step back, and then Castro will run right after him. Castro thought he saw the opening. That was broken in the second round. Just where Castro needs to put Jones. Back him up into that corner. He's letting him out, though. He had him out earlier in this fight, too. Jones is left uh, coming down a little bit. May be tiring here in the eighth. He's been eight rounds once, nine rounds once, never ten. Nice straight right by Jones. I want more, says Castro. Come on. Well, he's going to get more if he walks right in. Jones is very pretty to watch when he can wind him up and let him go. Castro has not followed the script, though, because Castro is not running in slow haymakers. Eight rounds down. 
Neither fighter has ever been down. And they've had eight rounds out of that. that. This one's scheduled for 10. Let's uh, listen in. Roy Jones Sr. working on his son. His right hand is taking a good to Good rhythm, this guy. I see his sword out there. Two more rounds. Let us have fun. Sometimes your worst defense is bad offense. And there is Castro throwing the left hook, finally getting a punch out to his opponent. When he reaches his arms out, he eats an overhand right from Jones. That comes from schooling. A lot of time in the gym. A super talent, Roy Jones Jr. He and his father can sing, we did it our way. Only 17 fights in four years since uh, starring in the Olympics. Lost in controversy for the gold medal at 156 pounds to the Korean opponent. But nevertheless, the International Amateur Boxing Association gave him the Val Barker Award, the outstanding boxer in the game. And now he feels uh, he is on the threshold of finally making his move as a pro. Came out of the Olympics. Considered the most talented of all the fighters on that team that has uh, sent one fighter to a world championship. Michael Carbajal, Ray Mercer, of course, also counting the WBO. Riddick Bowe, another of the fighters who is uh, moving in on the target. But it was Castro that was moving in here in the early part of this round. He backed Jones into the corner, landed some good shots, and then he let Jones out. Harder times uh, befalling the other U.S. Olympic hopefuls of that team. Andrew Maynard, Anthony Hempert, Kennedy McKinney, Todd Foster, to name a few. But Jones continues without a loss. And now looking to pick up the pace. This is his biggest test so far. And uh, so far, he has uh, an A on his paper. So fast with these punches. These are middleweights. Middleweights bring the speed of the lighter weights and the punching power of the heavyweights. Jones ranked four in the world. Castro ranked six. And there looks to be a pretty big difference in two notches. Coming down to one minute to go. Argentina's Jorge Castro coming in to the backyard of Roy Jones and in Pensacola. Would this be the same fight if it was in the backyard of Jorge Castro? Or how would it differ? I believe it would be the same kind of fight because what Castro is having trouble with is that lightning speed of Roy Jones. That's something that 17 fighters before have had trouble with. Those combinations are so fast for a middleweight. These other mid middleweights have not seen this kind of speed before. And he may be on his way up to super middle. 15 seconds left in the ninth. Castro steps back. A little dancing by Roy Jones to conclude the ninth round. He brings talent and flair to the ring. Could be a hot item. Roy Jones and Jorge Castro, meanwhile, knows that he has to record his 50-second knockout to take this one home to Argentina. No doubt about that. Only way he can win this. Maybe worried about taking his nose back home. The nose has been broken since the second round from that man. Roy Jones. Speed is power. And look at these fast, flashy punches from Roy Jones. The left hook has been his most effective weapon. And he is excellent at throwing in combinations. And a question, should he have followed up that last shot? Sure. 
every punch he should follow up. So for the first time in his career, Roy Jones uh, enters the 10th round. And just what Roy Jones needed. He needed to see the 10th round. He'd not been in the 10th round and been criticized for it. Here he is in the 10th round. And again, flexing that right arm is Jorge Castro. Well, he's been doing some flexing on the chin of Roy Jones because Jones has tasted that right hand a few times. Not enough, though. Castro has been wobbled a couple of times. A locomotive who has never been down in his 76th fight professional career. Not been removed from his feet. Not been off he, the tracks. <laughs> not even by Terry Norris, who he fought last December to 12 rounds. World title shot. Now that I've passed the audition, I can maybe say things like that, right? That's right. Well, well, I think Darren Van Horn is sitting right behind you, ready to move in. It looks like he still has uh, more of a fight career ahead of him. Now, Jones doesn't want to get too careless, but he'd love to take this guy out. Bad blood between the two. A little bit of a flare up in the way in. Crowd wants Jones to put Castro away, but that's a pretty tall order considering his background. Nice combination by Jones. He gets in and he gets out. Coming down to a minute left in the fight, and Jones, at least on his legend now, could put a 10-rounder in there. back the last year and a half he has fought a total of I think it's 19 rounds Roy Roy Jones still though here in this 10th round he's been training for the 10 round distance raised around boxing good combination even in this 10th round look he still has the speed it finished for Jones make that 17 rounds he has fought so one fight, he puts Tannen under the uh, belt. Castro still hanging in there. Shows that he won't go. And Castro just warming up. Uh, maybe thought this was a 12-rounder. He's saving it for the 11. So the big crowd from Pensacola delighted. They came to see Roy Jones put on a show, and he did just that. One streak is down. His knockout streak ends at 17 in a row, but he has uh, just put his 18th victory on the board. We'll be back in just a moment. Ten rounds down, Roy Jones goes the distance for the first time. No suspense as far as who won the fight as he goes for his 18th. But let's get the official decision from Mark Vero, see how the scoring went. Did he pitch the shutout? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Jay Cassis scores it 98-92. Judge Vincent Thomas scores it 99-91. Judge Fred Sauer scores it 191. All to the winner and still undefeated, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. Well, his biggest test to date, Sean O'Grady had it 100 to 90, the shutout. Roy Jones looking to elevate into the title picture at 159 tonight, having problems uh, making the weight. A growing young man, and he now goes to 18 and 0, facing another top 10 foe. 
and doing away in one sided fashion. And we are running now for tonight's power punch. Roy Jones, don't go too far because you are involved. And the power punch is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that distinctively clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud, and so far, nothing has beaten Roy Jones. The power punch against a guy who has never been down in now 77 fights. It came in the second round, and uh, he didn't get Castro down, but did enough damage to break his nose, and it happened with that sweeping left hand. The nose of Jorge Castro broken in the second round. He still went the distance, but lost to Roy Jones, and that was our power punch of the night.